All right, something happened to me recently, and um, you know, it's not something, well, it has happened before, but it, it doesn't happen very often. But today, in light of many, many changes that are coming to the real estate industry very soon, um, I think it's important that we talk about it so that you have an understanding of what's kind of about to happen. Okay, I did say in a few in a video a few months back that um, things weren't really going to ultimately change very much as a result of this uh, new uh, NAR lawsuit. <sighs> but you know how it is. Things are gonna change a little bit. And today, anything and everything is made to be so sensationalized because everyone wants clicks and everyone wants attention and everyone wants eyeballs. So the headlines are just crazy out there and over inflammatory. And even though I have to make my titles, you know, clickable also, I also don't blow smoke. So here is the real, so far, end result of the NAR settlement, the NAR lawsuit settlement and how it's going to affect the real estate industry moving forward for buyers at least. But first, if you're a buyer, how many homes do you buy or have you bought? Do you even know what to look out for and what to do? Do you know what all the disclosures mean? For some, very few. The answer might be, yeah, 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 I, I've got it. Uh, I've bought a home every year for the past 10 years and I put it in my investment portfolio and yeah, that's that. And if that's the case, you're either thinking that, you know, real estate agents are great and a totally valuable resource, or if you had a bad experience, agents suck and you don't need one and don't ever want to work with one again. Heck, I'll even let you in on a little secret. Most agents themselves don't actually even deal in that many transactions per year, like maybe two to five. And for some agents, transactions don't happen often enough for them to really even have the best grasp on, you know, how to tackle every situation and scenario. Each transaction is different, very, very different. And sometimes you can have a transaction that's really buttery and smooth. And sometimes you can have some transactions that, you know, sustain significant turbulence. Sorry, I, let me, let me just back out of all that and uh, I just back out. I just want to say that I guess my point is that there have always been people out there who feel like they can handle doing real estate transactions personally themselves. And to those people, I say, go for it and good luck. Now for the rest of us, uh, as a result of this NAR lawsuit, it is more important than ever to begin your home search with an agent that you know, that you like, that you trust to look out for your own interests. Someone who has ample experience and knows the market inside and out and who is actively handling transactions. These new rules are actually an opportunity and a little bit of a notice to everyone out there because the days of walking into an open house and speaking with that agent and then maybe touring a few other homes with that agent before deciding to technically actually work with them are over. First major change, number one, agents are required to make clients sign a buyer representation agreement and include a fee for service before showing homes. <sighs> yeah. So in the past, you might not have already had an agent and you might want to play the field a little bit and not tie yourself to an agent. Honestly, there are a lot of people out there who just met an agent at an open house or after walking into an office or heck, just picked up the phone and Googled, you know, top real estate agents in Bend or something like that. Or they just used whoever was listing the house uh, to help them buy it. This is kind of important here. I get that you used to be able to use whoever was standing right in front of you to complete your purchase and you still can. And maybe some people just thought that that's how it was supposed to be. But we also hear horror stories from clients who didn't exactly pick the right real estate agent the last time, especially recently, which you know, is probably a big reason why, you know, in general, real estate agents don't necessarily have the best reputations, but they just haven't had the right one yet. So I guess what I'm trying to get at moving forward is that buyers who 
want representation to help them buy a house, because it's a very good idea, will be required to tie themselves to an agent before they go shopping. And so just signing with whoever you meet in an open house might not be the best idea. Basically being a looky-loo just got a lot harder. You can still go to the open houses. You just can't go look at anything else. So whereas before you could kind of play the field and look at a bunch of different houses and maybe have a few different agents working for you sort of at once, before deciding to pick one to actually transact with, now you kind of have to figure out what agent you want to work with first before you go look at homes. Then sign the buyer representation agreement, then go shopping. But also, what does that mean? Are you now responsible to pay that buyer's agent out of your own pocket? Enter major change number two. So in the buyer's representation agreement, buyer's agents, like like us, if we were gonna work together, right up front tell you in the document that we expect to get paid and we name the price. Now, how we get paid is not clearly identified and that end result is still ultimately undecided because it's going to come down to the buyer and which particular property that they're looking to buy. In many, 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 many cases, like, 95 to probably probably 99% of all cases, I mean, it's still a little unclear as to who's exactly gonna play ball, but in the vast majority of cases, the buyer's agent will still ultimately get paid by the selling agent, just the way it has always worked. So just because the agreement says that the buyer is gonna pay the agent, that still doesn't really mean that that's how it's gonna work out. Other possibilities technically include negotiating the fee into the purchase price or having the buyer pay that fee in cash at the closing table. But again, those are from all indications going to be very rare occurrences. So as you can see, business is going to continue on for the most part as usual. However, about a month from now, everyone will be required to sign a buyer's agreement uh, with, with, their, with their ultimate buyer's agent before going and looking at homes. Therefore, hi. If you were looking to buy or uh, heck, sell, we, we love sellers too, uh, real estate here in the Central Oregon area, we hope that we've earned your trust through the videos that we provide on this channel and we hope that you would consider us your local real estate agents. You can reach out to us by going to crownrealestate.com or you know you could probably stalk us down in the description of this video and find our direct contact information there as well. This one is a little shorter today. I didn't want to bore you too much. Just want to let you know that from this point moving forward, and in fact for us for a long, long time, we've always done this, you're going to be required to sign a, a buyer agreement. And so we, we hope you choose to work with us. Thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you over in the next video. Cheers.